That's interesting to know. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this virtual Royceville District Committee that is being conducted with members and officers at various locations, communicating by audio, video, and online. There is also an opportunity for the public and press to listen and view proceedings. Before the meeting starts, I would like to invite the committee member and scrutiny officer to explain how proceedings will work and to confirm that members, officers and registered speakers are in attendance. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, please note that this meeting is being streamed live onto YouTube and recorded via Zoom. I'll undertake the roll call. So when I call your name, please could you indicate your attendance to confirm the required members, officers and speakers are present and can hear and be heard. Councillor Tony Hunter. Present. Councillor Ruth Brown. Present. Councillor Jean Green. Present. Councillor Gerald Morris. Yep. And Councillor Carol Stanier. Yes, I'm here. And officers Ashley Hawkins. Yes. And William's doing IT for us this evening. And speakers, we have Sergeant Jonathan Vine. Yep, present. And we have Mr. Robin Wood. I believe he's having um, technical problems with the sound. So we know he's here, but we can't hear him at the moment. Extracts from the remote and partly remote meetings protocol are included with the agenda and the full version is available on the council's website, which includes information regarding live streaming, noise interference, rules of debate, voting and part two items. Members are requested to ensure that they are familiar with the protocol. Um, please note that due to a change in the software, votes, any votes this evening will be carried out by using the raise hand button. And are there any questions before we start the meeting? No, in that case, I'll hand over to the chair, Councillor Tony Hunter. Thank you, Chair. Thank you kindly. Uh, right, if I move us on to the agenda, item two, apologies for absence. I have none at present. I think everybody is here. That moves us on to item three, minutes. We have quite a list. Uh, take as read and approve the true record, the minutes of the meetings the committee held on the 15th of January, the 1st of July, the 7th of October, and the 2nd of December. Uh, four sets of minutes. Uh, has any uh, committee member any amendments to make against the minutes that have been sent to them? I'll look for raised hands. I can see that in that case, I'd like to propose and take them as read and approve as a true record of the minutes of the meetings of the Royston and District Area Committee. Sorry, Tony, I dates. had a bit. No. Tony, I had a really small correction to make. One of them says Hitchin. I think it's the July minutes. Actually, so it just it's obviously part of the template. It needs changing to Royston. Is that sorry, Carol, you you're very quiet indeed. Oh, can you speak up? Okay, sorry. Uh, I'm not sure if I can. I will turn it up and see what happens. Um, so I think it's the July minutes says it's Hitchin meeting. It just needs altering. I think that's obviously part of the template. That, that's a very minor point. I can correct that, Chair. Right. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Template error, obviously. <laughs> OK, thank you kindly. Uh, can I ask for a seconder uh, for the minutes? Thank you, Councillor Green. Uh, no comments, no, I can't see any, so we're moved to the vote. Yeah, so could members please raise their uh, virtual hands if they wish to vote to approve the four sets of minutes. Yes, we have enough votes for, to, for that to be carried, Chair. Thank you kindly. Right, moving on, uh, notification of any other business. Um, or correction, uh, obviously under this new regime, which is quite unusual, I can't sign the minutes physically. So I authorised the committee and member scrutiny officer to apply my electronic signature and initials to the approved minutes. Thank you kindly. Uh, I'll move on to chair's announcements, item five. And uh, 
bear with me this evening because earlier today I had an Outlook problem and I'm juggling one or two new devices to try and get them working. Um, so if I suddenly disappear for a moment, my apologies. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending and also the um, town talk was interesting this evening in the sense that we did have two or three people actually attend with us. So it was quite good to see. Um, obviously they haven't joined us for the main meeting. In accordance with the council policy, this meeting has been audio recorded as well as filmed. The audio recordings will be available on ModGov and the film recording via the NHDC YouTube uh, channel. Uh, members are reminded to make declarations of interest before any item and the detailed reminder about these speaking rights is set out under the chair's announcements on the agenda. Uh, I move on to, I have, I have to announce that Councillor Bill Davidson, as many of us may be aware, has resigned as a councillor and therefore as vice chair of this committee. I'm sure the committee will join me in passing on our thanks to Councillor Davidson for his work uh, with this committee over the years. And obviously we wish them well in their new venue, which is Leamington Spa, um, which they have moved to. Um, we hope that both Bill and Lindsay um, enjoy their new location. And I'm sure you will agree with me on that one. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Um, that moves us on nicely to uh, Sergeant John Vine and item six. Uh, for a presentation on crime and disorder matters in Royston. Although attending a meeting the other night, I don't think um, Sergeant John Vine has a lot to report at the moment. Good evening, Councillor Hunter. Um, yeah, thank you for having me. Thanks for inviting me along. It's always a pleasure to uh, come along to these. It's been, I think, seven years since I've last done the committee meeting. Um, I've been away, been doing other things in the police, but uh, I'm back to the town and the place that I really enjoy working, and that's, uh, that's Royston. Um, yeah, so the last 12 months, you know, obviously I can't start any presentation this year without mentioning the effects of uh, COVID and, and how it's affected policing. Um, initially, it was it was really bizarre. We saw the, the, the we saw the increase in um, domestic violence that we normally would get uh, over Christmas period, and that sort of went on for a couple of weeks. But uh, things really quickly levelled out, and uh, since then, we well we saw initially saw a much reduced demand on other policing uh, services. Um, it sort of picked up back to normal now, really. But crime levels are uh, are exceptionally low still in certain areas of crime. Um, they're, they're pretty much what you'd expect, but I will go through them in a minute. Um, the Royston in general, from our perspective in relation to COVID, has, has behaved very well. Um, we've had very few breaches. The, the community have been fantastic and they've done exactly what they've, they've been asked by the, by the government. Um, you know, with other areas have seen some of the, you know, the mass gatherings and we just haven't had that. So uh, it's really, I'm really grateful for the community for, uh, for listening to that. It's, uh, it's made our life a lot easier. So when I came back in, um, in July last year, it was, there was a few issues that were, um, were, were sort of like bubbling away. And one of them was uh, the antisocial behavior with some of the, uh, the, the youths in the town. Um, we had a particular group that were gathering in the uh, in Priory Gardens and beyond and causing no end of issues. Um, and we set up an operation called Op Skateboard, which was targeting them directly. Um, it wasn't just about um, uh, bringing them into the justice system, it was about supporting them and seeing where we could work with them to get them off this uh, little blip of crime that they decided to go down. Um, but unfortunately, they, they, uh, a group of them committed an offence that was um, quite serious and uh, they've subsequently been charged with that offence and awaiting court. Uh, so we've, we've done a lot of work, some enforcement, some support work. Um, it's all ongoing, but the bottom line is, is that the group that were causing us issues um, have, uh, well, it, it, it seems to be all under control and, and that ASB issue has, uh, well, reduced to nothing now. We just don't have any at the moment that on, on any sort of scale that would, would hit our radar. Um, so that's good. So we've been, it's, it's, it's really interesting. We've been trying to be as visible as possible in the town whilst um, obviously we've got the COVID issues and uh, we've maintained the same staffing levels that we've had uh, for the last couple of years. Um, 
in relation to the rural area, um, there's not, honestly, it's been fantastic. There's been a massive reduction in crime. We're still getting a few um, hair coarsening incidents, but they're few and far between. And uh, burglary offences have reduced considerably out in the rural area. One of the, the things that keeps cropping up in Royston is, and across the county really, it's not just specific to our area, is uh, speeding. Now, we do these priority setting forums where we ask members of the public to give us an indication of what they want our um, sort of policing priorities to be for the, the, the coming quarter. And every time we do it, it's speeding, every time. Um, I should think 60% of responses from the public are about speeding. Um, and we, we do what we can with the resources that we've got. So I do put police officers out to try and enforce speeding. Um, but fortunately, in the last couple of weeks, and this isn't a political thing at all, and I do apologise if it comes across that way, but the, um, the Office for the Police and Crime Commissioner has supplied us um, a, a, a speed van, which is the first time we've had such a resource in Royston. It's, uh, it's been deployed a couple of times already in uh, Bali, and you should be seeing it in the next couple of days in Royston Town Centre. It's, um, it's a van that hope, we hope to keep long term. That's not been confirmed yet, um, but the Police and Crime Commissioner is, um, is purchasing two for the county. Um, in itself, probably won't get a great deal of service out of that, but probably one, once a fortnight we'll see that. But uh, I hope this van that we've currently got, we can re retain it uh, and do a lot of more speeding work in the community because that's what the community want. So that's, that's a positive. That will be um, upsetting a few people in the coming weeks, no doubt. The, the only thing that that's I've sort of identified in the last couple of weeks that's um, maybe beginning to start uh, an issue is uh, there's an increase in graffiti around the town. Um, we've got no idea who's doing it yet. Um, we had a we had a swastika drawn on the back of Tesco's uh, in the town centre over last weekend, which we you know were quick to work with Tesco's and getting that uh, removed or covered. And uh, certainly, you know, there's an investigation going on. But it's uh, in, in a dark alleyway, effectively, which is, um, is it, I never get them right, official or market or official. Um, it's going to be difficult to identify an offender. So the one thing I would ask at this uh, meeting and from NHDC is if we can really work closely on the, the graffiti side of things. The quick removal of graffiti, in my experience, is the best way of, of stopping it. Um, there's no point graffiti and if we know if they know it's going to get taken down within days. So we've got some work to do there together. Um, over the last 12 months, you know, I've, I've identified that the youth provision in the town is um, we could do with some more facilities for the kids. Um, we in the police are seeing not so much in the last couple of months, admittedly, because uh, the, the parks have been emptier. But we have seen um, a, a, a massive reduction in the uh, engagement that we have with kids. And that's because well, pro probably because of COVID in some ways. But uh, we don't have anywhere to meet them. Um, we used to go to youth clubs. We used to go to uh, the town when Andy and Viv had uh, the house open and the kids used to know us and we've lost touch with them in, in a in massive way. And um, I'd really like to see if we can do some work around that because that's something that I do feel that uh, is missing in the town at the moment. And, and from a uh, policing perspective, if we get that right now, we reap the rewards in three to four years time when these kids are you know, gonna be the ones in the park um, they certainly listen to us more if they know us as people. So that would be a, a positive thing that we can do. Um, moving on to crime wise, I'm going um, I'm going to cover most of the crimes um, according to my whole area that I'm responsible. Now, um, I'm responsible for the policing from Bulldog Services all the way across to um, parts of, or the edge of Buntingford, all the way up to the, uh, the Cambridgeshire border. And, uh, and the Essex border up at Nuthampstead. So we've got a massive piece of land. So these crime figures refer to that huge piece of land. And even when you look at the, um, that, the, the crime figures are exceptionally low. So it's really positive stuff. The one crime figure that you know, really everyone is interested in is burglary dwelling. And uh, I've split that down between the town and the rural just so that we can get an indication of what it's like in each. So, Last year in Royston Town um, wards, we had 21 burglaries. Um, it sounds high, um, but you have to bear in mind that they're not all, you know, coming home from work, seeing your house turned over. Uh, a number of these will be domestic related burglaries where ex-husband has broken in to get his, you know, his PlayStation back or whatever. Um, we get, I should think, 30%, 40% of our burglaries aren't the, the burglary that you, you know, envisage it to be. So that was 21 last year. And we've gone down to, um, to seven in the town this year. Um, 
are we doing anything different? No, um, I think it's just that people are at home more and um, burglary isn't something you want to get involved in nowadays because there, you know, you've got a strong chance of meeting someone in a house if you burgle it. So that's fantastic. That's one of the real positives for us about COVID. In the rural area, we've gone from 59 uh, down to 21 for the year and they're the figures that are accurate as of today. So massive reductions in, in, in the crime that I believe affects people most um, and undermines their, their feeling of safety. Um, the crimes that have remained pretty stable are the ones I expected to really. Criminal damage is um, 127 last year, down to 112 this year. Theft from motor vehicle, which was one of our priorities, um, predominantly around the theft from builders' vans. So we, um, we, we've done some work in relation to that and we're gonna continue that into the summer. We've, uh, we've got some displays and presentations at uh, Juicen's and uh, the, uh, the, the builders merchants so that we can hopefully get some of the, uh, the tradesmen down to come and see what security products are available. Because we do understand it impacts people's lives when they get their tools stolen. Um, it's, if, you don't, if you're not a tradesman, you probably don't get what it's like to uh, lose your own tools, but I do understand it. So we're down to 79 to 71. Violence with an injury involved has gone down from 127 to 83. Um, yeah, I pr pretty much expected, really. We don't have a nighttime economy at the moment, so those assaults that we used to see at pubs and on closing time, they're just not happening. So that's a positive. And we've seen a slight increase in shoplifting, but you know, when there's times of financial hardship, we do see the slight increases in shoplifting and the offences like uh, theft of uh, petrol make off without payment for, for fuels tends to increase as well. Um, overall, the crime has gone down from 1,089 recorded crimes last year in our area down to 894 um, as of today. Um, I think it's about 17.6% reduction over, overall. Um, moving into the, the coming sort of 12 months, really, the, there's, you know, there's, there's stuff always ongoing and I've used the time that um, we've had a bit of sort of, it's not downtime at all because I've never been busier, but um, I've used the time wisely. I've, uh, some of you will see the scaffolding up at the front of the police station. I want to portray to the members of the public, we are here, we are open for business. And as part of that, so I've had the front of the, the station restored. Um, so that people can see that we are we are there and, and still in their town. I want to increase um, visibility in the town over the next 12 months and uh, hopefully with working with Royston uh, Business Improvement District or Royston First, they're looking to part fund a, uh, an additional PCSO for the town and uh, if we can get that through that will give me a lot more opportunity to deploy the existing PCSOs in, in different roles and that will include getting back into the schools and, you know, us doing our bit to try and engage with the children again. Um, I want to do some more of the preventative work that we used to do with the elderly to stop them being victims of crimes. And that's uh, going into residential um, sort of homes and care homes and just explaining what, you know, what the world is like out there for elderly people and the, the vulnerabilities around uh, uh, cyber crime and, and, and et cetera. Um, I've already said about, you know, I want to work with uh, some of the other agencies to increase the youth provision in the town. And I've already spoken to one of the town councillors in the last couple of days about um, potentially using the, the town cinema uh, for a youth night once a month, um, which is going to be a great start and a, a great way for us to engage with the kids. Uh, overall, it's, it's a bizarre position for me to be in and say that I don't have a great deal of concern at, at the moment in Royston. The, you, are, you live in a, in a town that is extremely safe. It is even safer in the last few months, um, probably because of COVID, probably because of us and some of the work we've done. But uh, yeah, things, things are pretty good in Royston. There's always going to be stuff that we can chip away at, but overall, um, you live in a very safe place. Thank you kindly and much appreciated uh, for all the work that you do. Okay. Um, Is there any questions at all? Because I don't, you know, uh, that, that's from my perspective. So other people might um, might have other questions. You beat you beat me to the punch because that's exactly what I was going to say next, John. Um, but I was pleased to hear about the van. I think that's a very positive step as far as speeding. Yeah, it really is. Um, we, we've got it for a, uh, I think it's about uh, four to six weeks. And um, already, we've you know straight away you can see the benefits of it, and and to be able to deploy something so highly visible and impactive is um, is amazing for us, and we're we're going to maximise it over that six weeks. And if we get the results that we we want, which we will get, then and the, the feedback from the public, 
um, we're going to look to see if we can um, keep the van and, and potentially fund it and, and, and buy it. But that's that's down the line. Uh, it's not a definite. OK, thank you very much indeed. Thank and you. obviously, Lord Hart's policy on graffiti was always anything that was offensive that went up uh, was removed as quickly as possible. The only problem with graffiti is when it goes on to areas that um, belong to private individuals or bridges and that type of thing, which is always very difficult to remove. Um, I look to the committee. Um, any raised hands? Any questions? Uh, uh, Councillor Morris was first. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, John, for that. Thanks, um, A um, quick question. With the delays in the law courts, um, what, what, do you know what efforts they are now making to get up to speed and to catch up? And any idea how long it's going to take? Because obviously the gap between a crime being committed, you guys getting involved, and there actually being a result is taking like forever, isn't it? It, it, it has it is taken a long time, and, and you know I'll, I'll go back to that that bunch of uh, youths that uh, will be were causing us problems. They've been charged, and I don't think they're going to see a court till probably November. Um, you know, you can look at it both ways, really. Um, yes, it's it's not great that we're not getting uh, a quicker justice, but in this particular case, um, we've got four kids that are now worried about going to court that aren't causing me any troubles during that period. So it has there's a swings and roundabouts effect on this. So. I think they will be um, doing what they can, but I can get some further information and come back to you and let you know what's being done. I'd have to speak to uh, the CPS on that one for you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Thank you, John. That's um, <laughs> I heard, heard, heard a similar presentation at the annual town meeting, so it's great that you're engaging with us. Um, and uh, you talked a lot about the youth provision and the need for young people. You talked about Andy and Viv, who obviously won, they, won that award um, and who I know very well personally because I was part of the church that launched that, oh, that uh, youth brilliant, provision. Brilliant project. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah. That was... Well, we, we sank all our spare cash into it. So, uh, But they sank their lives into it over 20 years. So yeah. how can you compare with that? Anyway, what I wanted to say is the church has now bought that building. Wow. Um, and is and it's up, it's on the sort of on the in actually in the grants community update report. We're now applying for some funding to NHDC for some when I say we the churches um, for some to re refurbish it. But we really want it to be a community hub. And I don't know what we can do. So really, my question to you was, what can we as the church do? in terms of supporting um, work with young people and supporting you to 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 um, you know, promote that good relationship. I know Rob's also um, very interested in the young people and is looking to start a youth council of the town and also part of our church. So um, what can we do to support you in your in seeking to to create a, you know, um, a good relationship with the police? And um, as you described that you had before. It's, it's fantastic to hear that there's this stuff going on. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. Um, you know, when I look back, because I've, I've been hanging around Royston um, quite a long time now, and I've seen the changes, like, like we all have, um, and we've seen the batches the kids go through. They sort of seem to come through on three, three or four-year batches. Um, but we had, back in the day, we had the, the, the youth club where the sort of 13 to 15-year-olds used to go, and then the 16 to 17-year-olds used to go to Viv and Andy's. And it was almost like a um, like a training centre for them before they went out into the town, into the pubs, where they could just sort of socialise, be young adults, and uh, and be treated like adults. Um, it was it was lovely for us to walk in there to see these young kids that um, had, had grown up, they were maturing, and Andy and Viv were pointing them in the right direction in life, and it was it was just brilliant. Um, and even engaging with the younger kids at the youth club and just going down and playing pool they knew us and we knew them and uh that was the massive difference in the town back then and we, we've lost that um and it's it is Im impacting on us um and i think we have seen an increase in the antisocial behavior accordingly because the kids they don't I th it was kind of a bit of a give and take thing you know they were never perfect don't get me wrong but they um they used to listen to like pcso penny thompson and uh they still to this day talk about her um, very fondly and she's still around but uh yeah, we don't engage. But that, that's what we'd like, you know, from our point of view, is just giving the kids somewhere to go, something to look forward to uh, one night a week, um, and something that we can go along to and, and, and work with you guys and, and bring some additional services to them, really. 
Thank you, John. And obviously, uh, in our report from our community engagement officer tonight, it is actually in there that Trinity Life, uh, he's actually working with them to find funny, find funding, and especially the um, uh, capital project uh, funding that North Arts run, uh, which is still in operation. Uh, any other questions? Can I see all? I can't see any other hands, John. So I think you've had a light evening, but you're more than <laughs> welcome to join. Do you, do you want me to stay, or is I've, I've got wish. I've got a little lad upstairs that's uh, waiting to go to bed? Is it? Uh, do you need me for anything more? Uh, no, John. But thank okay. you kindly for attending, and much appreciated. And uh, as I said, I could tell you we're out of uniform and not working this evening. So thank you for attending. Are oh, you welcome? And, and, I, and I'm extend this to everyone, please. If you've got any um, problems on your area, please just pick up the phone and give me a call because I'd rather nip them in the bud than let them, but you know, build into something that they they don't need to be. So just let, just to work together and just give me a call anytime you need anything. Okay, well, we've done that over a number of years, John. So we I have indeed. Being in Lovely. Thank you ever so much. Thank you kindly. Thank you. Thank you again. Take care. I'll, I'll move us on to item seven, which is public participation. And then we have Councillor Robin with, with us this evening. And I hope um, all is now working as far as your system is concerned, uh, Rob, and that you can actually talk to us. I understand it's referenced the um, parking charges. Um, hopefully you can hear me. So, yes. so that's a plus. Um, firstly, I'd like to say, you know, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. It's been a, you know, it's lovely to see you all. Um, but I'm not speaking as the mayor of Royston. I'm not even speaking as a town councillor. I'm speaking to you as a member of our great Royston community. Yeah, I believe the council are looking at car parking charges, which may lead into an increase in charges. Now, over the last year and a half, the Royston community have been supporting the Think Local, Shop Local, wherever possible. Now, I believe that we have seen a massive increase of footfall, and we have certainly seen a much more and better vibrant, popular market, which I can say thank you to all councillors present that have been supporting this. So why would the council even be looking at putting up council charges on car parking? Not only will this be a real kick in the teeth for those hardworking businesses that have been suffering throughout the last couple of years, but this would also be such a tragic news because you know what the press would make out of it royston hit by parking charges they might not say how much it is that would have devastating effects of life in royston high street and it could affect the market as well now i would have liked to seen the council announcing at least a two-year parking freeze this would help businesses that have been suffering throughout this pandemic would also give a strong message to the Royston community that have been fantastic throughout this time that North Arts District Council care about Royston. So that's what I would have liked to have seen the council releasing statements like two year free park you know i would love to see parking free for everyone um but i know that's not going to happen what i would like to see is a policy where we can speak to local communities see what they would want i'd be quite happy to work with the north arts district council as a member of the public or as a councillor to talk to you about what's happening in royston so I'm offering my services. If North Arts District Council want to take that up, I'll be quite happy to speak to any officers or even councillors, because I know that with your help, Royston will become even more vibrant town than what it is. So while we're looking at parking charges, 
which may be an increase, I find just unbelievable. Um, I've spoken enough, so thank you for your time. And hopefully the council will consider the parking charges and just throw it out. If it does go to full council at Letchworth, I'm hoping officers will allow me to speak at that full council meeting. And I hope that councillors will be asking for that to be a recorded vote because I want people to see who, if it does increase, the councillors that have voted for an increase in the parking charges in Royston. Um, thank you again for allowing me to speak. On a slightly second, different note, I work, you know, I knew Bill Davison and Lindsay Davison, especially on the town council, and I wish them all the best of luck. And, and it's great that this council has recognised their hard work. So thank you, Tony, for recognising them. And that's all I want to say, but thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Thank you, Rob. And uh, likewise, I thought parking charges was a very important thing and one that ought to be discussed by the committee. Um, but so it's clear to you, the actual um, car parking charges was actually done at Cabinet and also last night and also done early in the year um, where they actually set their budget. And unfortunately, one of the things um, I wanted to bring to the committee's attention was the fact that Royston will be, uh, if you like, not only getting a 2% increase for this year, but also the 2% that was last year. Um, this is something we'll be discussing in debate next, Rob, um, but obviously the budget was set by the current administration and it was set that it would be inflation linked year on year. And unfortunately, last year they held it and didn't increase it, but this year they intend to. So um, obviously I wouldn't make my comments to cabinet until I actually had a discussion and a debate within the committee itself. Uh, so that's why it's on the agenda this evening. And actually the next item, if you'd like to listen in. Thank you kindly, Rob, much appreciated. Anyway, I'll move us on to that item then. And excuse me for juggling. I'm having to use my phone this evening rather than tablet, which makes life quite difficult. Royston parking charges. Now, as the committee are aware, all members of the committee um, received a communication from Louise Symes on the 3rd of March, asking for comments back um, with the new increases. Now, I, f I felt as the chair of the committee, it wasn't something for me to go back to without actually a debate within our committee itself. And obviously went back to Louise Symes and said, this is my opinion, but obviously I'd like to bring it to my committee so it can be reported back to the executive member. Now I did ask her to, um, join us this evening. Uh, but yesterday afternoon late, I received an email actually saying she would not attend because she'd been in discussion with the executive member and the deputy for planning and transport. And it was agreed uh, that this was a proposed inflationary increase and the uh, necessary stakeholder, stakeholders would be contacted for their comments. And that included us, the bid and Royston Town Council. Um, so she was um, suggesting it was up to myself as chairman uh, to get the views of the committee by whatever means I thought was viable. Now, obviously seeing cabinet met last night and discussed um, parking charges, I still felt that we ought to bring it to committee this evening. I'm just a little disappointed. We haven't got an officer. Um, but those that haven't read the actual email on the 3rd, there was a 2% increase in accordance to inflation and uh, a 4% increase on season tickets uh, for this year. Um, and obviously it's rolled over from last year to this year because last year was not implemented. Now, I've obviously spoke a lot about parking over the years and in fact, far too much. Um, 
because local residents have always um, banged the drum about car parking charges and we've always tried to keep it at a reasonable amount. Personally, I'm totally against a one glove fits all across the district. I don't feel that um, every car park should have the same inflationary increase. I've always believed and promoted, and a number of others have here, um, that each car park should be looked at on merit. And I also feel personally that we're in a situation that is a little bit different than we've seen before in the sense that obviously what actually happens next is something none of us can second guess. I firmly believe that the pandemic is gonna change people's working activ activities and our car parks will probably be not as used as they are now. Obviously, we're a commuter town, always listed as a commuter town, and a lot of people park their car to catch the train. Now, the situation is, I think, the whole working experience is going to change over the next year or two, and whether our car parks are going to be exercised and used as much as they are now, I find um, the probability is that they're not. And with that in mind, I think, as Council Inwood said earlier, that we ought to be looking at them in a totally different way. And he's such a sweet child, Carol, <laughs> trying to catch the background. And he's back again. <laughs> Not to worry. Um, obviously, one thing you cannot control is children and animals, um, which is something we found through Zoom. But personally, I don't feel we ought to be putting car parking charges up this year at all. But that's my personal opinion. And I think we ought to be reviewing it and looking at the situation when we come out of the pandemic as to what are we gonna do with our car parks? Are we gonna rethink them, change what we do? And obviously that's something that's been going on at North Hearts for some considerable time as far as uh, our parking areas are concerned. And a lot of different things have been looked at, but I've done enough talking. So I look for hands for anybody else to, to have an opinion. Uh, Councillor Brown, then Councillor Thank you, Morris. Chair. Um, so the first thing I'd like to say is I don't remember seeing an email from Louise Symes on the 3rd of March. Um, I don't think, I think it may have gone to you as chair of committee. But anyway, suffice it to say, I do know about this because obviously it was in the cabinet papers. Um, I would like, also like to just say, and maybe this is a, a note for committee services and the engagement officer, uh, no, probably committee services. Um, it would have been nice to have that report that went to cabinet a, a, in, in these papers so that we actually had those figures in front of us. I know we can all find it because it's, it's published, but that would have been helpful, I think, as part of the papers for this meeting. Um, I understand that Cabinet voted um, in favour of those increases last night. So, um, as you say, the decision has been made. Um, and just a couple of other things I wanted to note. Um, in um, the addendum to the car parking charges last night, it says that Royston First Bid did not comment. Uh, they didn't receive any comments. And I find that extraordinary. Um, given the, the the meetings I've been on and how, how often that issue of transport, car parking, buses, etc., bus service into town and all those kinds of things come up, I, I find it surprising they didn't comment. Presumably they had a chance and they didn't, but it seems extraordinary. Uh, the town council, of course, did. Um, but then finally, on to what I feel about this. Um, I've got a few points. Um, I'm not very happy about the rise in season ticket prices, um, but in particular... I have been asking for an, a while now for um, some of the, the underutilised car park at the Warren for spaces to be set aside for residents to pay for a season ticket on a reduced rate like you would for residents parking, for example. There are a number of residents who live in the town centre, have no parking, who, who could use that. And that is an underutilised car park. And that's um, I understand the cabinet member is going to take that forward. Um, he said so last night, but it, it seems to have been delayed because um, I, I, it's not the first time I've asked. Um, and so that was one thing. The other thing is I, I feel that it, the whole issue of, car, of parking, I know it's very emotive, but we need to balance 
um, the income we get from car parking and encouraging the businesses and supporting the businesses into the town centre with the environment. So we've just been awarded the sustainable travel town and that requires us not to have free parking in the town centre. I think we need to be encouraging people to park immediately outside the town centre, walk in and stay as long as possible, uh, browse, pay for lunch, pay for um, coffee, spend a lot of time in our wonderful town centre, as Rob said. It's a great place to be. We've got lots of lovely outlets, um, which, many of which are even thriving with a takeaway business. Um, I understand that people from villages maybe don't have a choice because our rural transport's not good enough. They have to come by car. Um, but I, I think if you look at the stats, you'll find that the vast majority of people who drive come uh, do uh, their journeys are less than two miles. They could cycle. So we, we need to increase, improve our cycling infrastructure um, and we need to encourage people to use other means of transport. And um, personally, what I would have liked to have seen in these in these parking tariffs, and I know I'm out on a limb with this because I don't think the cabinet agreed with me, but I would like to see us proportionally reduce the longer stays and make short stays more expensive to encourage people to actually stay in our town centre. Um, and then just finally, and I think Steve made this point very well last night at cabinet, is um, we, we should be changing the way we charge. We should be making it much more flexible. I think a lot of people are not put off by the cost. They're put off by the inconvenience. I so no, certainly know I was. The reason I used to go to Morrison's after three o'clock was because I didn't have to bother with the machine. I could still get my money back because I was spending the money in Morrison, but it's a pain having to find 50p and put it in the machine. So I think for a lot of people, it is about convenience, not about the cost. And therefore, I think we need to find a way. And there are so many ways now of making it more flexible. So you pay on exit. Uh, it's done by NPR or whatever it is. So uh, and these these solutions are now very, very much cheaper and more cost effective. So those those, those are my thoughts. Um, I, 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 I would love to have some evidence. And I think we should do um, try and collect some research evidence about whether the three after three actually makes a difference to footfall in town after three, whether it makes people come in or not, um, to see what the value of that is um, and, and what makes a difference. What would increase footfall to the town centre? Is it free parking or is it something else? So that's that's all I have to say for now. Thank you, Chair. Um, that's interesting. You brought up a number of points there and we could enter into a long debate on that one for the simple reason that anecdotally it was very evident three after three did work for the simple reason that Morrison's car park was full um, after three o'clock and so was the market full after three o'clock um, that people were actually coming into the town. Whereas before we introduced three after three, it wasn't. Um, so... Uh, it was always a very difficult one to actually prove one way or another because obviously the tickets that were issued um, prior to us bringing in three after three actually were um, at one level and then the car park's full so you can't actually gauge it. Um, so it did actually work as far as the town was concerned and I know a lot of people from the villages were making a point of coming in after three o'clock for the simple reason, A, the convenience, as you rightly said, and also the fact that they didn't have to pay. Um, and also it tied in quite nicely with the fact that schools were turning out at a certain time and they could actually come into the town park and do their business, do their shopping or whatever they wanted to do, and actually then move on to the villages. Um, obviously the cabinet have passed this. Um, we can offer our views and opinions, um, which we will do, um, but it's an interesting one that it's actually set now, so we can't actually stop it. All we can ask the cabinet to do is actually consider some of the points that we're bringing forward this evening. Now, I personally, and I think you touched upon it as well, Councillor Brown, that obviously the Warren being empty, uh, our, our whole car parks are going to change totally, I think, over the next few years. And I think NHDC have to think again about it being a cash stream. In fact, it isn't a cash stream. The money that we actually get or North Hearts get or the current administration get goes into ring fenced for car parks. So effectively, a great deal of the money that's actually taken for car parking charges is used on the multi stories, which seem to be perpetually falling down or having to be repaired. Uh, because of their structures. It's an interesting one. Councillor Morris, you indicated. Yeah, thank you. Um, 
chairman, as I, I could go on forever about this, I'll try not to. Um, as long as you have free car parking in the supermarkets, Tesco's and all the rest of it, it's, 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 you, it's a no brainer. We wonder why the center of our towns, like um, we're talking about Royston, why they get, they deteriorate. We know about shopping and the internet and all the rest of it, which of course is part of the argument, but you know, it's a no brainer whether you go to Tesco's or whether you go to the center of the town. The center of Royston, I guess is under, undergoing a, a bit of a revival because of the pandemic, because people are not commuting into London and all the rest of it, but that will pass. The fact that there's more residential, I think there's more residential being created in the middle of Washington, that also helps. But unless you radically overhaul the way parking is dealt with in, in Royston, it, 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 it will never ever take off as it ought to. When, as I say, when you're competing, you, you either get the supermarket people to charge, which I don't think is gonna happen, um, or you do something much more radical um, about parking in places like Royston. You only need to see how councils, and this again is not a political point, you not only see, need to see the way councils manage town centres badly. You go to Letchworth. Letchworth, they spent a fortune on the middle of uh, Letchworth. I, presume, I don't know whether it's town council, district council, or what. And it's architecturally, it's great, but, it, but in, from, from the public's point of view, it's, it's terrible. You, you've got Weatherspoons and a few other than and that, and, and that's it. The, the final point is that one size fits all for parking. That's to say you have the same, I think you have the same parking tariffs throughout the district. It makes no sense also, leaving aside the three after three and all that stuff. Um, you, if you park in the center of London, you pay, I don't know, 25, 35 pounds for a few hours to park in London. You go out into the suburbs of London, it's considerably cheaper. Now, I would have thought that the demographic of Royston is not the same as the demographic of a place like Hitchin. I'm sure that, there, that Hitchin is probably more affluent than Royston is. And the, the, the charges should reflect that. To charge the same everywhere, it just doesn't make any sense. If I was running the whole thing, I, I would just change it completely. I really would. Um, and then we wouldn't need to wonder why our town centers are deteriorating. That's my little uh, session, Chairman, thanks. Thank you. Well. It, the, the blanket increase is actually against infl is inflation. The, the actual charging is different across all the um, different towns because um, they all have a different rate. Um, the thing is, I was disappointed in the sense that my comments that went back to Louise were not reported at Cabinet. Um, in fact, I actually said in my email that I could um, support the fact that the one hour increase was not going up. Um, but personally, didn't feel that inflation uh, across our particular car parks at this point in time, I could support for the simple reason that I felt um, at this stage and this year, we ought to continue with um, a no change. Um, but I look for other hands. I can't see any at the moment. Councillor, uh, Jean Green and then uh, Carol. Thank you. Well, can I say, ever since I, I moved into Royston and, and as a councillor, I have always had the problem with parking. Um, I'm not sure that people will want to buy a pass to park in the Warren because a lot of the people we have had complaints of were having to pay to park outside their houses. Um, the car park in the health run by the health centre, people would rather have a little bit of freedom to pay for little or more there because when they go in the doctor's surgery, they don't really know how long they're going to be. Um, and so that, from that point of view, that car park must be looked at uh, different to others. And on the last time we did our parking problem, uh, reviews as uh, administration, we managed to get the one by the se uh, centre lower. Uh, to put it up, then we're going to get some more problems with people that want to visit the doctors. Uh, we 
we have the problem on Wednesday, obviously, a market day at the Warren car park will be full. So the people that have actually paid will then be complaining that they've actually um, paid for something that they can't use. I believe that the parking shouldn't go up. And like you, Tony, um, if we're going to do anything um, against the cabinet, then please put me against any car parking charges. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, it's actually already gone to cabinet and actually been passed. Um, so we will be making our um, opinions known to the executive member. Uh, Councillor Stania. Thank you. Are you able to hear me? Just because it was really quiet earlier. So, yeah, OK. <laughs> so um, so I wasn't at the cabinet meeting last night, so I don't know exactly what was discussed, um, but and I don't have a vote on cabinet anyway. Um, but I do think that actually it's one of those things, obviously you don't want to put charges up, but I think actually in view of the fact that we're looking at the environmental aspects of things, and that is something that is really important to me and I think is really important to the whole of this administration, um, we need to be looking at how we can find other more environmentally friendly ways of making our town centres work with the environment so basically we're not constantly driving into the town center maybe people can make a short stroll into the into the town center they can cycle they could use the bus ideally you know um, these things obviously need to be funded which i'm sure um councillor hill is going to mention later but um i think that uh, it's again part of the sustainable travel town we need to not be having free parking because actually the whole the whole point of it is to make it sustainable more more environmentally friendly and and having very cheap parking charges just does, doesn't support uh, the whole, I think Tony what you sorry councillor Hunter what you said is right about things that are going to change about the whole way town centres in fact are going to change I don't think it's just the car parks that are going to change I think it's town centres but I think that what councillor Brown said about um, people coming in and actually spending time and it's an experience you get you go to Tesco to do your weekly shop but you go to the town centre I go in and I, I meet people and I wander around and I pop into one place for a coffee and I pop into somewhere else to see what they've got and it's not necessarily about doing a weekly shopping there admit, admittedly especially now Morrison's is gone but I think it's a different kind of experience you're looking for and I agree with councillor Brown also that that if you know, in terms of charging for the car parks, and I think Councillor Green also touched on this, that if you don't know how long you're going to stay, it's really hard to, to pay with your money in the machine and that we should be looking at different ways of doing that. And I hope that actually the, the portfolio holder is taking that forward. I know that it was discussed previously about paying on exit and then you can pay for what you've actually used rather than having to guess in advance and find the coins. So I, I would be in favour of, of making it financially feasible to run the car parks um, and yeah, I also think, and this is this is a, maybe a minor point, but there's a what is it, 2.2 million pound hole in the council's budget as a result of the government not coughing up when they said they were going to pay for everything. So we do have to make some sacrifices somewhere. So that's all I had to say on that. Thank you kindly, and uh, obviously, uh, I don't think uh, our car parking charges are going to cover 2.2 million pounds. Uh, far from it. Um, but that's something else that the council's going to have to find ways of um, creating revenue streams. Councillor Green, you're indicating. Uh, you're on mute, Councillor I'm, Green. I'm interested to find out. Um, these people that think that uh, we should park out of town and then walk in, how do they think that the elderly are going to do their shopping in the high street? That's one of the things that if they're going to put the charges up, a lot of the um, people live just on the outskirts of Royston, uh, out of the town centre, just in, say, Melbourne Street and places like that, but they can't walk in and take shopping back. So therefore, they're having to take their cars and they have to park them somewhere. And if they've got to keep paying extra charges, then they'll just go out of Royston to Tesco's, Aldi, Marks and Spencer's, even across to Le Le Letchworth and Morrison's if they need, because they've lost Morrison's shopping. Um, what do we do about them? We've got to really consider them, Tony. Uh, yes, and 
obviously how the elderly move from one part of the town to another it's all important um obviously a lot of them use cars uh, rather than scooters or anything else um because it's easier for them to do so um i get your point uh councillor agree um obviously the committee's talking but i am conscious we've got two county councillors here this evening and i know councillor hill's been heavily involved with parking over the last number of years one way or another and we've had numerous campaigns and would you care to say anything uh councillor hill thank you chairman and thank you rob um for an excellent presentation agree with everything you said in in your statement i just wanted to make sure i was hearing correctly that you actually received an email on these proposed increases on the 3rd of March. Chairman? That's, that, that's correct. Now, unfortunately, I can't access anything in the way I'm working this evening, because uh, having one device out. Um, but the, it was definitely the 3rd of March from Louise Symes. But I, I can remember checking where it went, and I noted that the county councillors weren't actually on it. Um, it was only no, that, that, yeah no that that wasn't my point my point was that you were actually contacted on the 3rd of March and the town council and also Royston first for a meeting that was going to make a decision on the 16th of March at which point there would no be no chance of any reversal bearing in mind your committee was obviously tonight which is the day after the cabinet meeting that seems an extraordinarily short period of time to actually have to come up with the comments and there could be no reversal. So I find that quite concerning actually and not very transparent generally, bearing in mind it presumably couldn't even come to a town council meeting. And um, as you've said, we've been fighting for fair charges and different rates across the car parks for a number of years and actually did manage to achieve that. I can also remember our walk and support scheme which um, it also in, in the end we managed to reduce the rates in some of the parked car parks taking on board councillor green's comments about the health center which we always felt was unfair that that should be high charges um, obviously having no idea how long anybody would be in in the the health center and also picking up on the pandemic reports and and comments i would have thought that we really shouldn't be thinking of increasing car parking charges in a year such as this. Um, obviously, I don't have a vote in this um, and, and I'm not part of the committee, so I'll thank you for letting me make the comments. I won't repeat everything else that's been said, but just to say that I totally endorse everything that a number of um, councillors have made and um, Robert Inwood as well. Thank you. Um, Councillor Stanier, you were indicating and Councillor uh, Morris knows. I, yeah, it was mainly just because I, I didn't receive the email on the 3rd of March either, but I do notice that it came to Town Council on the 26th of February. So um, I, I don't know about the dates. As I say, it is a very short notice, but that was just to make you aware. Thank you kindly. Um, Councillor Morris. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I just checked my emails for the 3rd of March. Uh, I didn't look elsewhere, other dates, but I haven't got an email about this uh, on the 3rd of March uh, either. On the environmental point uh, that Carol mentioned, I mean, I'm, I feel very strongly about the environment. I really, really do. Um, <laughs> I would, I'd worry about all cars, but that wouldn't do a lot of good. Um, certainly about airplanes. But anyway, I'm going off the subject. Um, the problem, the problem is, as I say, that the, if you look at Royston, the town centre now, as it is now, it's it's nail bars, it's vaping shops, it's hairdressers, a few places you can get a cup of coffee. It's not, it's not all, it's not an all, unfortunately, it's not an all round uh, experience. It could be, it could be those things, but it, it certainly isn't. And it's really, it's really simple. The more expensive you make car parking, you, you don't really discourage, you're not going to, you know, some, most of the people can't, are not within walking distance or 
probably even practically cycling distance of um, the middle of Washington, they'll go to places like Tesco. It's not complicated. The, the, the more convenient and the cheaper you make it for people, it's actually better in the long run because it brings more revenue into the town center. It makes complete commercial sense. That's it, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Um, obviously, um, being fair, obviously being a cabinet member, um, uh, Councillor Jarvis, did you want to actually make any comments about the meeting last night or um, put forward any information to us? Um, well, I mean, I was not aware of the transportation arrangements. Um, my understanding was the area committee would be consulted, but it doesn't seem to work very well in terms of voice them. And I'm not quite sure why that happened and why the decision could have been taken off. There was some consultation. So was, uh, I, think, uh, I think you have a legitimate point to make there. And um, I mean, I think there is always, uh, there is always a, a complex issue in terms of, of parking charges uh, because. Uh, um, and this has happened many times in the past in that the council has not put them up and has then put them up by a large increase in catch up and the previous administration has done that on a number of occasions and um, they weren't put up last year a decision taken that they, last night was they wouldn't be put up before september uh, and they would be put up whether or not they put up in december or in september will actually depend on the on the position of the pandemic if, if we could find ourselves um, if things proceed according to where the government expects and, and uh, the economy is substantially recovering, then they will. If, on the other hand, it turns out that there are further lockdowns, then that would obviously change the situation. Um, so there would have, have to be a change. Um, I mean, I think, I think uh, Tony makes some very valid points about the operation of the car park. I think we, we have a, a long-standing system that is terribly inflexible. Um, it's probably probably the best that could be done 20 years ago, but it really needs to change. It needs to be something where people can pay for the time that they actually park for rather than be guess how long they're going to be there for. I mean, I think the point that Green made about the visit to the health centre is absolutely the case. We need we need to change the way in which it's charged so we can charge. We can offer incentives to people who drive lower emission of smaller vehicles. Uh, so we can do the sort of things that Chris Brown was talking about in terms of providing um, uh, reduced fees to people who live in the town centre who don't have anywhere else to park. All those things depend upon a, a different sort of parking um, regime. And I also think you're right in that we're going to see a change to the way people are using not just car parks but the town centres. You know, uh, the town centre was already changing from the sort of place where people went to their their weekly shop to a place where people went to meet their friends to do things. Uh, and that's not just Royston, that applies to all our town centres. And, and that's that's a difficult issue. And the pandemic has enormously accelerated that. But what we have to do is see how we can make the town centre be successful uh, in the way town centres are going to be, rather than try and turn the clock back to the way it was 20 years ago. Because if we do that, we'll fail. So I think, um, I, I think you're exactly right. We need to think about how the town centre is going to be made successful. We need to think about how we're going to manage parking as a part of that. Uh, and we need to change both those things uh, if we're going to make the town centre as successful as it could be. It's got a lot going for it. Uh, and we need to make sure that people can use it, that people like enjoy coming there. It's a nice place when you're there. And that people are encouraged to come and stay rather than you know, stop for five minutes to buy a newspaper. To just, I don't think retailers can survive on that basis. I don't think the town centre will be successful if that's what we try and do. Thank you. Um, right, I think I'll move this on, obviously, because I think we could sit here and debate this particular issue for the rest of the evening, because um, we all have our opinions. Um, obviously, I'm picking up on the general feeling of the committee. And obviously, I think, the situation is that I'll put together uh, a synopsis of our feelings. Um, but personally, from the chair, I think I would ask for a vote uh, to the committee that generally uh, this committee does not support an inflationary increase 
in the town of Royston at this point in time and would ask for car parks to be reviewed in the light of the pandemic and obviously the operation of the car parks for the future, which I think will totally change. Um, so I'll propose that from the chair and ask for a seconder. Councillor Green, thank you. My clarification question. So um, I, I, I would like to support part of what you said and not all of it. <laughs> so I was wondering if you could split it. I would like to support reviewing how the car parks work. <laughs> I, I think, as, as I said, uh, I'm trying to be totally fair with this because <laughs> obviously yourself and Councillor Brown have got a different um, outlook on town centres. So what I said was that I put together a synopsis yeah. of what was said by the um, uh, committee and but also proposed this that the general feeling was that we did not um, support uh, an inflationary increase at this point in so time. We, so what we're voting on is that we don't support the, the inflationary increase. Is that is that that was my clarification? That, that yeah. Okay. Correct, okay. I do assure you, I will do a synopsis. No, that's fine. I'm sure the minutes will go as well, so that's fine. I just wanted to be clear what I was voting on. Thank you. Thank you kindly. I've got a, a my I myself proposed Councillor Green second. Uh, can I ask members to vote, please? And over to you, Anna. Thank you, Chair. Could members please raise their virtual hands if they agree with that recommendation, please? Okay, I'm going to take um, the vote against that recommendation as well, please. Uh, so I'll just clear these raised hands just to double check. <clears throat> All right, could anyone in against that recommendation please raise their hand? Okay, so there's three <clears throat> three members for and two against, so that is carried. Thank you kindly, Anna, um, as I anticipated. Um, and obviously, I'll put that together uh, with your good self and we'll put it um, to the executive member uh, at North Arts District Council. Right, moving us on. Um, item nine, grant applications. And um, move us on to our um, officer, Ashley, if you could present your report. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, first point is just regarding the budget, which is remaining for the committee to allocate, as uh, detailed in 7.3. Um, there's currently 2,645 in the budget, um, and this is the last meeting of the committee, and there's no further meetings in this financial year. Um, under the recommendations, on 2.2 there's reference to the 3 up to 3 p.m parking initiative because i don't believe we've actually agreed to carry this forward yet as a committee i couldn't see it in any of the um previous decision sheets so i put that back in this time just for clarification and just for members to uh, formally agree to the carry forward of 1500 pound um from this year's budget to the 2021-2022 financial year. Thank you kindly, because obviously that's something we pay in advance yeah. um, year on year um, for the year coming. And obviously um, it runs out in April. Thank you kindly, that makes perfect sense. Um, and uh, Chair, if members are in agreement to carry that forward, um, 2.3 is just um, for the audit trail moving forward into the new financial year. If members could agree that any underspend could be carried forward as community and environmental projects. Yes, Julie noted it's been a, a strange year and obviously hopefully things will get back to normal. But uh, that's a much smaller figure if my memory serves it is in the report. Yeah, if um, the carry forward will be 1,000, well, 
if taking out the 1,500 for three up to 3 p.m., it'll be 1,145, which will be carried forward. Um, but just to bring to the uh, committee's attention, 8.1, um, there is grants in the pipeline. Um, we've got Bryson Town Youth Football Club, who were seeking um, £1,695. Um, and we've also a, a, a application in the pipeline from Coombs Community Association uh, for £1,200 towards new chairs. And also the Royston Coral Society will be putting in an application and to have the June or September meeting. So just looking at those grants alone, we're potentially got a spend of over four thousand pound. Yes, thank you kindly. And uh, I note your community engagement updates. Uh, I don't know whether you wish to expand on any of those. I'm sorry, Councillor Stania, you indicated. It was a very small question. Um, just you said that the carry forward would be spent on community and environmental projects, and I wasn't sure if that was just a fancy name for that's putting it back into the pot for next year, or, or were you saying it was going to go to to somewhere else as well because you said environmental? So could you just clarify uh, that? Please? Yeah, um, Cherry, uh, uh, Carol, for, for the audit purposes, the audit trail, um, we need to uh, put projects going into the next in the next next PS budget as a project. Um, so that if that money's sitting there for five or six years, then they can challenge and say, why has not been spent? So it is going into the base budget for next year, but it'll be under that theme of um, community or environmental projects. Thank you. Yes, it has to be ring-fenced accordingly, yeah. so we meet our financial masters. Um, obviously, though, if Coombs are putting an application in, um, Councillor Stanio and I, if it does come to a committee and we're, we're still here, um, we'll have to declare an interest because Indeed. we both sit on that uh, particular body. Uh, Chair, just Is there any other updates? Yeah, we've just um, it's been it's been a funny year with the COVID, but um, and my role has kind of changed as well a little bit. So you know, I've been doing the community support um, uh, volunteering. Um, I've also been delivering hand sanitizer to local groups, uh, delivering the social distancing signage to local groups and businesses. Um, and also signposting local businesses to the various support uh, uh, grants which are available to them. So um, whilst I've been doing so many events, I have been kept busy doing other bits and pieces. Um, 8.25, we have the, the Chairs Volunteer Achievement Awards, which is now public knowledge, but we did have two winners um, from Royston. Out of the five categories, two came from Royston. Uh, the Friends of Fairfield Heath, and also Royston Fee Corona Paris, uh, which is a positive. Um, we've mentioned already the, well, haven't mentioned already, the, the bus shelters, which was mentioned in town talk. Um, we now have some dates for the uh, installation of the bus, the, the bike, bicycle racks in Market Hill. Um, the ground work is going to be done on the 14th of April, and then the, rack, the racks will be installed in the shelter on the 7th of May. And at the same time, the whole car park's gonna be relined as well. So um, that's a positive. That's something which is happening uh, pretty soon. Uh, the bus shelters, it's a longer term project. Um, Ickneal Walk bus shelter, we're hoping to have it in before the summer, but that's subject to COVID and subject to also, I've been informed Brexit and delivery of equipments and goods. Um, in terms of the bus shelter for Melbourne Street uh, by the town hall, um, we all had a we had a site visit uh, meeting back in January, and there was a digs uh, works excavation works carried out. Um, but in terms of that project, that may not be until the end of the year until it's actually installed, because I believe the lead in time is up to thirty weeks. So that one will happen, but it's going to, unfortunately it's going to take a little while. Um, 8.27, not going to go into too much detail on this one. The potential new bandstand for primordial gardens. Uh, it's been mentioned quite a lot recently. Um, so you'll see in my notes that um, the project has been agreed in principle um, and for the one of six monies to be allocated, but that's not been finalised yet. So 
as um, the town councillor has said, they're looking to do a consultation to see what people's thoughts are on that project. So that we'll wait and see what comes from that consultation when that consultation happens. And um, also, and finally, um, 8.29, um, I'm working with uh, Kate Hall from Trinity Life Church on our community facilities project application, which will be coming to the panel on the 24th of March for a discussion. It's going to be added as a, a late item because the agenda is already going out for that one. Um, but they're looking to do work within the town, work with the youth of the town. Uh, I know that's we've got Councillor Inwood here that the Youth Council are looking to use the venue as well. Um, it's going to target a lot of groups, a lot of um, a lot of need in the town. So hopefully um, we can get that application over the line and that project can get off the ground. That's all from me, Chair. Anyone has any questions? Yes, thank you for the updates. Um, Councillor questions. Councillor Brown? Thank you, Chair. Um, I'll try and make it brief. Um, I just wanted an update on the projects in progress that you didn't mention. Um, how's the resurfacing and lighting project going on that right of way? Um, I go down it quite a lot, so I keep thinking about it. And then the second bit is the two bits relating to the town hall. We've talked about those for a long time now, and I wondered what progress was being made. Okay, in terms of the, the Royston Town Hall, um, I'm liaison with um, Councillor Davison. Um, we've got a project outline for enhancements, refurb of the kitchen area to make it more disabled um, accessibility. Uh, so that we have allocated funds for that. Um, Councillor Davison is waiting for architects and uh, costings for that. They'll need to go out for tender and then the funding will be released. It's all the funding's been agreed on the one of sixes, so that will happen. Um, so we're just waiting now for the architects and then for some uh, builders, contractors to give us a tender for those tender for that business. Um, and what was the other one, Councillor Brown, regards to um, the the public right of way that Green Drift? Yeah. Um, yeah, I haven't got much of an update on that. The last I heard from um, Gary Hennings was there was issue regarding getting lighting to the centre part of the of the pathway. So as it stands and. At Chair 3, I don't know if uh, Steve Jarvis is allowed to comment, but um, uh, I believe he has more information about this one than I do. But there is an issue about getting the whole area lit, uh, lit and only be able to light the one end, uh, both ends, but not the middle section. Uh, quite happy to allow um, Councillor Jarvis to comment because um, it comes in his region. Yeah, there is a problem in lighting the narrow section at the green drift end. Because if you put a light column in, it's then not wide enough for to, to get a, a buggy or a wheelchair down. Um, so I think what probably will happen is that there will be a light at the end of that that will shine most of the way down there. Uh, the delay, I think, at the moment is that in order to install the lights at the other end, they need to be connected to the, the, um, the existing lights in the road. And my understanding is that there's been a delay in them being adopted by the County Council. And the County Council can't connect them to the lights until it owns the lights. Um, and I've not, uh, the last update on that was a month ago and they were still trying to resolve that issue. So, uh, and I mean, that's has been an issue for a couple of years in terms of getting the developer to get the road and the lights into a state where it can be adopted. Um, but I believe that when that's done, then it should proceed fairly quickly. Okay, duly noted. And uh, uh, the, the old problem of road adoption carries on. And a drum we've been beating for a number of years for government to actually think again, uh, to give councils more uh, leeway to make developers actually do things within a certain time frame. I don't believe it ought to happen immediately, but I think there ought to be a line in the sand as far as adoption is concerned, and there isn't one at the moment. So unfortunately, uh, that continues, because as you rightly say, they have to be brought up to a standard that the County Council can actually take them on board. Right, any other questions? I can't see any raised hands. Um, so I'm looking at the recommendation. Sorry, 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 it's not actually in my report, but something else I've been working with um, 
recently is with the uh, group behind the Walk and Talk initiative in the town. Um, I think a lot, of, yep. a lot of members are aware of this. Um, we have been looking to get signage for the for the five and ten k routes marked along the the, the roads um, via highways. But unfortunately, due to signage regulations, that's not going to be possible. Um, we've also pursued the idea of having stickers um, placed on uh, light columns or um, road signs, but again, due to restrictions on rulings with ringway. Again, this is not going to be possible. Um, so I am still working with Carl from Walk and, Tr Walk and Talk, um, but it's proven difficult at the moment. Well, we'll please continue because it's a great idea. Yeah. It really is from the fact that um, he's got so many people interested. It would be a shame that it didn't go ahead. Um, so I'll leave that in your good hands to find a way around the problem. Rules and regulations, um, uh, obviously, you've got to find another method. Uh, <laughs> and I'll leave it in your capable hands. Uh, yeah. I can't see any other raised hands. Um, so I'll move to the recommendations and take them in block. Uh, two, one, that the committee be recommended to endorse the actions taken by the community engagement officer to promote the greater community capacity and well-being for Royston. 2-2, two, two, that the committee agrees to carry forward of 1,500 from the current budget to the 21-22 financial year to continue to support the free after three parking initiative in Royston. And 2-3, that the committee agrees that any unspent funds for the 2021 financial year be allocated to community and environmental projects for 21-22. I'll propose that from the chair. Could I have a seconder? Councillor Stanya. Uh, we'll move to the vote. Thank you, Chair. Could members please raise their virtual or actual hands to um, indicate if they'd like to vote for those recommendations? Yes, that's sufficient to be carried, Chair. Thank you kindly. Uh, that moves us on. As soon as I can find it, uh, that moves us on to highways issues. And uh, I'll go to ladies first, Councillor Fiona Hill. Thank you, Chairman. There have been many research schemes for footpaths and roads in the year, but I'll just go through the highlights since the last meeting. There's been a lot of drainage works carried out, particularly in the villages and Picknage Road and London Road in Bali are almost complete. In Reed near Hobbs Hayes, that is complete and the further works are planned for next financial year, early next financial year in another area in Reed. Also in Mill Road and Mel Melbourne Road on the corner there and at Stamford Avenue, Old North Road and Green Street, Morton Street, there's work scheduled for the next financial year. Resurfacing works long overdue are taking place in Old North Road and Neesworth Street near the station and near the Queens Road Junction. And there's also pram crossing scheduled for York Way and Orchard Road next financial year. The speed indicator devices is now is in read on the A10 and working. And it's also been the device in Newmarket Road has been turned. Speed and volume surveys are currently taking place in Newmarket Road and Melbourne Road. And I'm also working with the police and, and John Vine, as you heard this evening, has agreed to carry out speed, speed checks as resources allow. And a number have been requested in Royston and in the villages. The feasibility study in Burns Road is complete and we're waiting for recommendations. The safer crossing over the A505 still continues looking for funding and it's going through the system now. It, it's been agreed through by the Greater Cambridge Partnership in the Melbourne Greenway. And we're looking at crossings in other areas as well to make it safer for walking and cycling. Seven million pounds has gone on into the budget this year at Hearts County Council or for the next year that we're going into the 20 mile an hour zones and also 10 million 
for drainage and sustainability schemes. So those are the main issues, unless anybody's got any questions. Thank you, Councillor Hill. Um, can't see any raised hands at the moment, so I'll go to Councillor Jarvis. Um, thank you. Um, the, the 20 mile an hour, 7 million is actually over, I think, three years, not, not next year. But um, hopefully we will make some progress on some 20 mile an hour. Um, in terms of progress, I'm pleased that at long last, the resurfacing outside what was Morrison's has been done, which I commissioned, I think, uh, two years ago uh, and got delayed repeatedly um, by, uh, by the county council's desire to do more of the path, uh, but they've now done it. Um, so hopefully if someone reopens Morrison, there'll be a fine path to the door. Um, there is uh, some reconsultation on weight and restrictions in Leyston Park. Uh, the initial proposal to try and deal with the dangerous parking on the bend at the entrance uh, produced a variety of responses from residents, some of whom wanted more yellow lines, some of whom wanted fewer yellow lines. Um, so there are some revised proposals, and um, uh, I think there are still some residents who want more yellow lines and some other residents who want fewer yellow lines. Uh, but that's a situation that hopefully is going to be resolved soon. I think we've got something that addresses the more significant issues that were raised from the first consultation. Um, there's some work being arranged to try and deal with parking on the heath, uh, on the Fairfield Road, where we get a, a lot of congestion around the, where the road goes through the woods, um, blocking the road on occasions. Um, and there was some work planned on the Lippington Junction, the first of the A505 junctions to have any, any significant uh, work on, work to prevent traffic from turning right out of that junction. Uh, there's going to be some preliminary investigation work, um, boring holes in the ground and, uh, and looking at ground conditions and that kind of thing to be done pretty imminently for the idea, but the bulk of the work will be done, I think, in September. Um, so that should address one of the one of the significant safety issues on the Hertfordshire part of the A505. Um, and I think that probably has there's a, there's a, a, a couple of other outstanding surfacing jobs to be done. There was a, a surfacing job on footways in Green Drift that um, was mostly done some time ago. Uh, and I've been trying to establish for some time why it was not all done, and I'm told that the bits that should have been done and won't were be completed this month. Even then, they've already been done today, or that sort of thing. But uh, I think that's probably all. Thank you kindly. Um, members, any questions? I can't see any raised hands. So I'll um, thank both the councillors for um, giving us an update. And as always, I'm sure we'll contact them if any highways issues crop up that we'd uh, like an answer on. Um, if I move on to item 11, ward matters and outside organisations, um, uh, has anybody got anything to report to committee at this point in time? Councillor Brown, then Councillor Stanier. Uh, thank you, Chair. So three organisations to report on, but I'll keep it brief. So Citizens Advice North Hearts are experiencing increase in demand and for their services and are expecting that to continue to increase. Um, they um, are only doing face, uh, actual face-to-face -face work in Letchworth at the moment, so they've got a very mixed model of how they do their services. There's no news on them uh, reopening Royston at the moment. Um, that's still under consideration, along with Hitchin. Um, the North Arts District Council have agreed an, a one-off extra 50,000 of funding for this year because of the demand they're experiencing for their services. Um, despite our 2.2 million shortfall in budget, we felt that was very important to do that. Um, so that's Citizens Advice. The bid, Royston First bid. Um, so there's, it's already been mentioned to, uh, tonight, the Shop Safe, Shop Local uh, campaign, which is jointly funded 
uh, well, it's a joint project between North Hearts District Council and East Hearts, uh, funded by the EU. Still a bit of EU funding coming through, amazingly. So you'll have noticed the red hand sanitizers in the town centre. They're all EU funded. They're through the bid and through that, that project. Uh, they're working together on that. Um, they're still trying to encourage footfall into the town centre. So there's an Easter Bunny trail coming up as they usually run. Um, the Christmas lights were a fantastic success this year. They put they put a lot of effort in. And I know Rob's nodding. He, he really did well promoting that. And I think that at the meeting I went to, they said they had no negative comments, which considering what happened last year was amazing. So um, a, bi a big step up. And the town council was ob obviously was involved in that jointly with the bid in organising that. Um, Regarding um, their funding, uh, the bid levy, um, they have had more in of the on the bid levy than most of, than average for the because on average across the nation, um, the bids are struggling to get all their bid levy in because a lot of businesses can't afford to pay it because of the pandemic and lockdown. Um, but uh, Royston first bid have done actually very well, and the remainder has actually been topped up by a grant from NHDC. So they've done really, really well. So the, they, their funding is pretty secure. Um, it's what they expected, if, if not more. Um, and the, just the only final thing to say, um, the AGM is on the 28th of April, Wednesday at 5.30 on Zoom. And they are looking for a few more members for the advisory council and possibly one member for their board. They want people from who represent local businesses. So if you know anybody who would like to be involved who's from a local business, um, they'd like to get a more representation from the town centre in particular. Um, so that's that. Uh, twinning, I just briefly mentioned, we had a quiz with our French friends from La Loupe on the 6th of March. That went really, really well. We did it in bilingually in French and English and we had a lovely time on zoom together so there are some advantages of zoom um and that's all thank you chair thank you kindly uh councillor stonia yeah, i've got two organizations to report on so i recently became the rep for the melbourne area youth development um so i thought i'd report on that so just um they weren't able to run the um, courses that they were expecting to be able to so they were hoping that that the current half term they would be able to do something online I know that I don't know whether they came back to our community engagement officer because I did point them at you Ash because they were concerned about not spending the money so Ash are you, are you able to comment? Uh, through, you, through you chair yeah I was contacted by the mm. the clerk and um, to say that the workshops didn't take place um, but they're looking to do workshops around Easter time, and I've said that is fine. But if um, the workshops do not take place, the funding will have to come back to NHDC and can't be used for another purpose. So it's it's all been recorded. It's all emailed. So yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah, I did point them at you because there was some concern about what happens if we don't use this money immediately. They are actually relatively well off because they were saying they've got funds to run about two years worth of clubs now. Um, they have been very concerned actually that the impact on the youth because of not having the social interactions and they've been trying to get things out sort of sending packs out to homes and things like that to do um sort of digital but then they were worrying about the digital exclusion and they've got a project refurbishing laptops to try and get those out to people as well that's linked to this project um they they have been struggling i think their provider groundwork who actually provides the sort of the actual hands-on childcare aspect of well not childcare but work with young people aspect of things um has had staff changes and they've had they again they, they're really struggling to recruit some suitable workers and they're looking at maybe making it instead of being making it less frequent or making it holidays only um they are looking for also for a bigger venue um and they 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 feel that they, they're still investigating areas i think They'd be interested in somewhere in Royston if that was found as well. Um, so I think that's that's all to report on that. There's, a, there's another meeting next week, so I'll have something more up to date next week on that. I also I will report briefly, although I know that Councillor Hunter was also at the Coombs meeting because um, I'm on that as well. Um, they've got a new trustee for the Coombs Community Association, which is great. Sounds, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to mention the name of the person, but I'll just say that it sounds like they've got all the necessary skills and sounds like they'd be quite good. So that's excellent that they, they were running a bit short of trustees before, but they 
always looking for other people. So if anybody else would like to join, I think they'd be very happy. They still have a, a slow trickle of, of, of bookings coming in. They're not expecting a sudden flood, but there are groups that are expressed interest are coming back when they're able to. So their finances are looking okay for the moment. And they've also got this new nursery starting in what was the Rainbow Playgroup room. Um, so they're promoting that at the moment. Um, so it's looking relatively positive. They do still have a problem with the drains, which has been back and forth to various <laughs> parts of NHDC. And uh, the drains are currently having to be rotted every week, which isn't ideal. But I believe that NHDC is still planning to pay for some work on that when they can get somebody out to go and look at it. So um, that's that's my report. Thank you kindly. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, obviously, I attended Coombs as well, so uh, I won't mention that, but I did attend the North Arts uh, CVS board meeting the other evening, and uh, uh, I'm pleased to report that things are going quite well there. They've managed to get some new trustees. Uh, the end of the year with a, a magnificent grant from the Lloyds Bank Foundation, uh, which was close to £30,000. And uh, effectively, um, they've been working really hard. And obviously, Corona has affected a number of things that they're doing, but they've been thinking outside the box and their staff have been putting in some exceptional work across the district. And I can only thank them for their efforts. Uh, I can't see any other raised hands. So I'll thank everybody for attending the meeting. And if I could ask Anna to contact me tomorrow for a chat um, so we can put together a report accordingly. Certainly will, Chair. Oh, and she sounds so good. Thank you. 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 Thank him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. her. It's a her. Oh, she's lovely. Thank you for bringing her this evening. Uh, it's put a smile on all our faces, I note. And with that, I'll close the meeting. But just to remind you, our next one is, let me see if I can find it, 7th of July. Golly gosh, let's hope that's a totally different environment we find ourselves in. Although with furlough, furlough extended to the end of October, I can't help but wonder. But I thank you.